Great. Great. Uh, thank you, uh, Ann and Rita. And uh, as I look out here, I want to recognize a couple other people out here. Our executive director, Karen Conklin. Uh, to the left, left of her is Chuck Jeffrey, our collections analyst, a key member of our nonprofit. And over here I see Ike and Catherine Ridgel. Ike was at every significant launch in the history of the Manned Space and the Manned Space Program. So uh, thank you all for coming here on a sunny day. Um, it's my pleasure to uh, introduce uh, uh, Mike Weinbach. Uh, over here, he's uh, 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 talking to him about being so local, living up in Scottsmore up here. A little piece of heaven on earth, because as an astronomer, it's the only dark skies around here. Uh, Mike was the last shuttle launch director at NASA's JFK uh, uh, Kennedy Space Center. And he was responsible for the overall launch countdown policy, planning and execution of activities for the last 11 years of the program. He was born in Reading, Pennsylvania, and grew up in Arlington, Virginia. Mike attended the University of Virginia at Charlottesville, uh, earned a Bachelor of Architecture degree and a Master's in Structural Engineering. And he joined NASA in 1984 as a structural engineer using his architectural skills, working on launch pad upgrades of the space shuttle program. He became Deputy Director of the International Space Station Program at KSC in 1998, and then became a launch director in, 20, in the year 2000. Mike led the launch team on 37 shuttle missions right through the end of the program, the final person given the thumbs up go to launch. Sadly, but part of his duties that he embraced, I know, Mike led the KSC's team in the initial Columbia debris recovery effort in Texas and Louisiana in February 2011, following that catastrophe and the loss of our seven astronauts. Shortly thereafter, Mike led the reconstruction team to determine the cause, collection of the debris, and reassembling it in a hangar at Kennedy Space Center. And he was a driving force behind the Columbia Preservation Team and the initiative to lend debris to industry and academia to develop better and safer spacecraft in the future. Um, and his book, Bringing Home Columbia, uh, tells the inside story of the mammoth effort of the 25,000 Americans that helped bring Columbia home. Uh, Mike's many service awards include the Presidential Rank Award, NASA's Exceptional Service Medal, and NASA's Medal for Outstanding Leadership. He retired from NASA in 2011, and he leads uh, tours at the Kennedy Space Center Visitors Complex. Uh, uh, a launch director's tour that you should all take and learn some behind the scenes things. And, uh, and of course, uh, as many of our important NASA executives, he, he sought out in industry uh, uh, for leadership co uh, seminars and motivation and so forth. He serves on the board of directors for the Astronaut Memorial Foundation, dedicated to honoring all the astronauts that gave their lives in service to advancing manned space flight. Mike and his wife, Charlotte, reside in Scottsmore, Florida. Mike, let's please welcome him to the stage. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Mark. Um, it's my pleasure and honor to be here. This is one of my favorite places in Titusville. I'd like to thank the people that maintain the, the memorial. It's, it's always beautiful. I stop by here every now and then to just pay respects to the astronauts and just think about things. Um, so thank you for maintaining this and putting on this, this ceremony once a year. It's my pleasure to be here. Um, in keeping with the, with the spirit of winging it that we heard about earlier, I think I'll wing it today. I, I have a nice six-page speech. <laughs> but that goes way back here. Okay. So I'm going to wing it, but being as old as I am, I do have key points that, <laughs> that I jotted down on the way down from Scottsmore um, that I want to cover. And so... So I don't forget the key points, I do have these jotted down. Um, Charles and I do live in Scottsmore. Um, I get asked every now and then, what is it like in Scottsmore? I say, oh, it's nice and quiet. It's very quiet. Which is probably why the cemetery is built up there. <laughs> the National Cemetery, so it got even quieter a couple of years ago. Uh, but it's nice up there. We've been there over 30 years. And we enjoy that up there quite a bit. 
Um, why are we here today? We're here to honor the, the fallen astronauts, of course. Um, we're here to honor them, thank them for their sacrifice. What's the, what's the root? What's the root reason we're here? We're here because we care. We care about the fallen astronauts. We care about the astronauts who, who thank God, did not perish in space flight. We care about the space program that you saw the hands, however many people worked in it, or had family members work in it. We're here because we care, and we like to, to demonstrate that care and, and, and show people that it's, it's worthwhile to remember astronauts and the space program. It, it, it truly is. And, and unless you think we're the only ones that care, don't, don't think that. It, it was mentioned that I put on these tours out of the Space Center, and that's true. Twice a month we get uh, 60 people come through the visitor center. And, and invariably, the tours include maybe 25 to 35 percent international guests. And, and, and those people care about our space program as much as we do. It's, it's in, it's, it is enlightening to see. It's incredible to see. It's heartwarming to see. I did some tours Thursday. We had, uh, had visitors from South Africa and Australia and Germany. Um, England, Canada. This was just this past Thursday. I get them all from all over the world, and, and they are impressed by America's manned spaceflight program and the, and the unmanned programs. And so we're here because we care about that, and we want it to go on. One of the points I'd like to make is, is talk about the astronauts a little bit, and, and we don't we don't have an. I think Charlie, you never flew in space, did you? No. Not physically. <laughs> maybe maybe every, every other Friday night or something. Um, <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. Um, but the astronauts, I'd like to talk about them a little bit because it, it, was, it was the role of the, of the launch director that, that Bob taught me and that uh, we passed on to the future launch directors. That the way you give the final go to launch astronauts into space is to think about them as people. Uh, we have all the technical expertise in the world and the launch team. They take care of all the voltages and pressures and all that stuff. The job of the launch director is to keep that thing on the ground until we're ready to fly. And the, re and the way we made that decision to, to launch the astronauts was to think about those seven people in the case of the shuttle. You think about those seven people on top of that rocket and we ready to commit them to the most dangerous thing they've ever done. It's the most dangerous thing they've ever done. Are we ready to send them into space? These are real people. They have real kids, real families, real parents, real mortgages. These are real people that, that uh, put their lives on the line in the cause of exploration to help us all, to help all mankind advance. That's the role of the launch director, is to think about those, those people, those friends, on top of that rocket. And are we ready to put them put them in danger, yes or no? That was our role. We were fully prepared to say no if, 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 if it wasn't good that day. And, um, and then the astronauts would have been on the ground. The rocket never left the pad. Astronauts are safe. May have had a different launch director the next day. I don't know. <laughs> but the day we said no, in the face of everyone else being go, our astronaut friends would be safe on the ground. And that was our job. Next time, you, next time we launch astronauts into space, and that won't be long, by the way, it'll be before June of this year. SpaceX and Boeing, we're not sure which one will get there first, but they both will. Think about the astronauts climbing into those new rockets, on top of the rockets into those new spacecraft. Think about the risk they're taking. Think about their families. They're putting it all in the line for us. It's incredible. They, they, are, they are heroes, but they're real people. Let us never forget that they're real people doing this incredible job on behalf of, of humanity, really. SpaceX and Boeing, they'll get there this year, finally. Finally. Uh, we'll be launching U.S. astronauts on U.S. rockets from U.S. soil the first half of this year, finally. It's been uh, since the shuttle retired in 2011, we could claim that. And uh, I've been cheering them on, we'll all be cheering them on, and, and we just hope it's it's a complete success. We've seen some incredible um, advancements in technology over the last 11 years, how, they, how SpaceX can land rockets back here on, on the ground vertically and out on a barge. Uh, Boeing is equally impressive in their spacecraft and their, 
and they're on top of the Atlas V uh, United Launch Alliance. So we'll finally be launching our astronauts to, go to the space station again and not, not be relying on the Russians at the tune of $85 million a seat. So that's a big deal. And I'm really, really, truly looking forward to it. At the same time, uh, we're seeing a change in, in, uh, in access to space and space business. It, it's an inevitable change, I see. It, we're, we'll never turn back. We see commercial enterprise going to space. We see space tourism will be taking off here shortly. Uh, and commercial business in low Earth orbit and elsewhere. And the whole, the whole change, the change to add commercial ventures into space in addition to the NASA government funded uh, adventures in space, it, there's no turning back. There's a huge industry that's about to, to bloom and, and thrive. And the only limitation on the, on the future in space is if we're timid. We cannot be timid. We need to advance. We need to get back into space, both with our, with our astronauts and unmanned vehicles, and, and go explore. It's in our DNA to explore. We need to do that. In keeping with, with um, the idea of going to commercial space, what I'd, what I'd like to pass on, folks, maybe, maybe most of you are aware, maybe some not, but later today, at the Space Mirror, the U.S. Space Mirror at the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex, we will be dedicating a granite panel, a new name on the wall, a new name on the Space Mirror uh, in, in uh, honor of Michael Alsbury, private citizen, private astronaut. He was a test pilot for Scaled Composites, a company in support of Virgin Galactic's uh, space tourism business out in, out in Mojave. He lost his life in 2014 in a test flight. And after a lot of discussions among the board of directors of the Astronaut Memorial Foundation, we concluded it's the right thing to do, to include private astronauts on that wall if they, as they're advancing you know, the, the exploration of low Earth orbit and beyond. So later today at 2 o'clock, there will be a dedication ceremony for the new name on the wall, Michael Alsberg. I invite you all to attend. I'd, I'd suggest getting there a little bit early. I think it would probably be a pretty good crowd. But nevertheless, think about that. It will be the first private citizen honored on the, on the U.S. Space Mirror. And that happens at 2 o'clock today. Uh, finally, folks, I know you're not here to listen to some old guy preach to you, um, which is what I'm doing, I guess. But if I could close on a, on a personal note, um, Columbia's, Columbia's astronauts, you know, what, what, what I mentioned earlier about the launch director getting to know the astronauts, we had to know the astronauts. Not only did we want to know them, we had to know them to make that final decision. And Rick Husband, the commander of Columbia's final mission, and, and uh, the rest of his crew, were, they were my friends. I committed them to space, and, and they didn't make it home. And um, I think what Rick would say today, knowing Rick pretty well and, and Evelyn, I think what Rick would say today is something on the lines of this. He'd say, well, Mike and the rest of us here today, if, if you have to have a ceremony to remember us, I guess I can't stop you. Go ahead and have your ceremony, but make it part of the ceremony to look forward Look to the future. Don't always look to the past. Don't on, only look to the past. Look to the future and press on. Rick and his crew died for us. It means a lot. I think he would want to, he would want to be remembered. I think he would want even more that we think about the future and press on and, and, and honor he and his crew by pressing on and getting back into space, doing the business we love. Daniel words were beautiful up front. Thank you for those. We're all in this together, folks. And um, Rick and his crew are looking down, and they're, they're appreciative of the recognition, but only if we press on. Thank you, guys.